Welcome everybody to Cuisine of Different Cultures. My name is Paula Ludwig. I'm with the Atlantic Institute. We are a nonprofit organization that promotes positive dialogue between uh, next door neighbors, religions, um, politicians, uh, interfaith, um, just getting out there and knowing people in different cultures. Um, and one of the many ways we do this is by exposing people to other cultures. And food is always a great one um, for people to get, get on board with. Um, we have several programs that we do um, every year. Um, and we have people from all over the world who are instructing and or participating in these. So if you haven't already, please put where you're from in the chat. This helps my bosses and my board members know that we need to continue doing these virtually so that we can um, have everybody from all over participate. Um, right now, I'm gonna show you a two minute video about the Atlantic Institute, and then we'll turn it over to our cooking instructor for the day. All right, let me share my screen. The Atlantic Institute is a nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting harmonious coexistence between peoples of various cultures, faiths, and backgrounds. We seek this goal through peaceful dialogue, education initiatives, and community organization. Our dialogue events bring together experts, community and faith leaders, and knowledge seekers to address social issues that affect us all. We feel dialogue is the most important element in peaceful coexistence, so we try and maintain several panel discussions, TED Talk events, and book clubs throughout the year. These events touch on social issues, race relations, and cultural understanding and are a mainstay of our programming. The Atlantic Institute's education events are extremely important to our mission of understanding. We want to promote socially forward critical thinking to students of all ages. To that end, we have developed programs that seek to grow the creative spirit of students and help them think about their communities and the world around them. Our Future Leaders of Dialogue event brings together nominated elite students to learn from each other as well as political and business leaders. Our Art and Essay Contest gives students a theme about important societal issues and allows them to create wonderful works of art and writing while steering their minds towards improving their world. We are always seeking ways to educate youths and adults in order to make a peaceful world for all of us. Our community events are designed to transform neighbors into friends and groups of people into a community. By associating with other nonprofits or by our own initiative, we are always trying to discover new avenues to improve our neighborhoods, places of worship, and community centers. We host cooking demonstrations of food from other cultures, work with various nonprofits to help elevate the work of others and try to find a way to make the lives of those who are disenfranchised or marginalized better. Building a more peaceful world starts in our backyards, so we are dedicated to improving our communities and associations. The Atlantic Institute is always seeking like-minded volunteers and collaborators. If you would like to learn more, find volunteer opportunities, or just want to chat with our staff, please visit our website at www.atlanticinstitutesc.org or follow us on Facebook. We will never run out of fun, educational, peaceful events. So come join us to help make this world a better place full of understanding and unity. As I'm in the midst of applying for residency right now, wish me luck, Grammarly has again been a lifesaver with my application. Sorry about that. Personal statement and CV. They always jump into the next video on me without me being able to stop it. All right. Yes, thank you, Kay. All right, I am now going to turn this over to our instructor for the day, Trey. She is going to make these wonderful veggie wrap things that I have behind me here. Um, I know I want to turn around and take a bite. I don't know about you guys. Um, so I am going to, uh, you guys have got to unmute now, and I'm going to spotlight them. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, great. My name is Trang and I'll be your instructor today. Uh, any question if I'm talking too fast, just uh, tell me slow down. So first we're gonna start off, I'm gonna give you all the ingredients that we use. 
uh, it's this is gluten free, vegan, and vegetarian as well. So we're gonna start with rice noodle. You can get this at Walmart. Uh, rice noodle doesn't have to be this brand. So we're gonna start with hot boiling water. I got this water going. Let's see. So we're gonna wait until the water boils. All right, so for the ingredients that you would need for sauteing the um, veggie roll will be a bag of coleslaw. I'm trying to make it nice and easy for you. You can buy your own cabbage, your carrots, your cooked cabbage. It's whatever you want it to be. But I just got a one pound bag, nice and easy. And you can get any tofu that you like. And while the water is boiling right now, we're going to add in the rice stick. You don't have to put in the whole bag now. You can put in as much as you're going to eat. If you're cooking for one or for a family, it's up to you. So when the water is boiling, you just place it right in. You can break it down, just like spaghetti. And just want to boil for a few minutes. You don't want it al dente, you want it cooked. We want to do the noodle first because you want to drain it and for it to cool down before you start your sauteing the veggie. Okay, so why the noodle is cooking, I'm gonna cut the tofu. You don't have to fry it, but I like um, your know, texture. It's all about texture when you are cooking, baking. So what I like to do is we want to make sure we have to show the noodle right here. So make sure the water is submerged. See the noodles cooking? So it'll be about a few minutes and then we can drain it. But in the meantime, I'm gonna cut the tofu. I have to water. Yeah. Drain, you can do this ahead, but I want to show you how you can cut your tofu so it'll fry faster. You don't have to put the whole brick of tofu in there. You can cut into small pieces. But definitely you want to drain the water. You see this water in here? Drain it. You can wash it as well. So I'm going to move it to the sink. Just make sure we don't want to overcook our noodle. Okay, still doing good. Okay, I rinsed out my noodle, and now you just bend it down a little. Yep, there you go. So we're gonna cut in thin slices, see? About half an inch. All right, let's check our noodle. Okay, just like spaghetti, you wanna taste it. Mm, a few more minutes. Oh, let me introduce uh, your other ingredient. All we have now, when we saute, the veggie, we have the coleslaw mixture and your soy sauce. I like Kikkoman 
because that's great for making sauce and you can use it for sauteing if you don't want to keep a lot of different soy sauce in your house. And we're gonna need a little sesame oil, any brand will do. Walmart has everything. I bought everything from Walmart. almost there. Now let's heat up the oil. If you want to know if you can't eat to tofu, what else do you use? Oh, you can use anything. Uh, if you don't want tofu, you can do shrimp. You can do uh, pork, chicken. This roll can be any way you want doesn't have to be just tofu, but you know, I'm trying to uh, do so that way everybody can get their veggie in and you, and with the veggie as your base, you can add chicken into it, pork into it, a beef, but you saute everything, everything is cooked and then you may wrap it up like a burrito. Does that answer the question? I think so. Let's check the noodle. We don't want noodle overcooked. It's almost there. It's not clear yet. Okay, I'm gonna turn off the heat for the noodle. It can sit for a minute. Now we're gonna pan fry the tofu. So tofu is nice and the oil get nice and hot. You can do it in um, a deep fryer, but for the ease of cleanup uh, at your house, you can just use the same saute pan you're gonna cook your vegetable in. So you're gonna fry your tofu in. And if you don't want to fry, you can cook, you can eat this, um, you can uh, blanch the tofu in the water or in a soup stock. So it doesn't have to be fried. But like I said, it's all about texture. So some fried tofu in there is really good. All right, we're gonna take the noodle out. We're gonna drain the noodles now. Should be done. So you wanna take it out of the water and we're gonna drain it. And this will go into a wrap. You don't have to put noodle if you are staying away from starch. Okay, so while the noodle is resting, go back to the tofu. And if you're watching your diet, you don't have to use this much oil as well. And you don't have to fry it really well, but I like it fried really well. See, like this, you can take it out, flip it at this point. You see how it's lightly yellow, but I like it fried well. The texture, there's a texture difference. While we're waiting for that, we're gonna chop up the, the scallions, but I got some fresh chai from my garden. So you need, it's a, you can, this is um, a dish that you can offer to the way you like. You can put any herbs in there you like, but nothing with rosemary or tarragon, more like the Asian herbs, like, um, let's see, cilantro, chai, onion, shallots, garlic. You can do fried garlic in here, fried shallots. So we want to chop this up, your, your chive or your scallion. You don't have to be fine, nice and chunky fine. Now I'm going to chop up some uh, cilantro. So I already pre-washed the cilantro. And this, this dish, you want a lot of cilantro. And uh, I don't have any basil right here, but this dish is really good with the uh, Thai basil. 
and also with um, mint leaf, you know, the, the mint. That is also good with it too. Just do it coarse, you don't have to do, chop it fine. So we have this ready when we do our sauteing. We're just prepping ahead. Our tofu it should be ready to flip. I usually do with a chopstick, but you know, I've got to bring my tail chopstick. So you see how nicely brown. Okay, tofu is ready. We don't have to get it completely brown. I'm gonna pour away the extra excess oil. Just strain and leave about two tablespoons of oil in your pan. And now we're gonna start sauteing. So this will save you um, dishes to wash, okay? Okay, I pre-shredded some um, garlic, fresh garlic. You gotta use fresh garlic for this. You can do onion as well, but fresh garlic will really well. Like two tablespoons of fresh garlic in here. Now, you don't want, you don't want this to burn, okay? You don't want the garlic to burn. So be careful on this, your pan is nice and hot. Now you wanna start adding, you see how it's getting brown? Now you wanna start adding your uh, veggie in right away. Paulette, did you uh, include the recipe um, so they can they know what to use? I just put it in the chat. I put the ingredients list um, in the chat okay. for everybody. Because I'm so. just doing a small sample size, but the recipe I've given is for like a whole pound, like the whole pound of um, tofu, whole pound of uh, of cabbage. So you just saute it. Now you can add your seasoning, whatever you like. You like pepper. Like, uh, you just don't need uh, like a teaspoon. Right now, I'm just doing a small map, so it's soy sauce. So, if you follow the recipe, I made it already before the show, so that way I know the quantity for you guys to use. So, you can make a big, a big quantity or small quantity. The key here is to cook your veggie without getting water. You see, there's no water in the pan because so you're gonna put it in a roll, but you don't want any liquid, otherwise, you're you know, like just think of like a burrito. Will be soggy. So a little bit of uh, sesame oil. If you don't like sesame oil, you don't have to. And low pepper. Some people are allergic to pepper. You can use white pepper. It doesn't have to be black pepper. If you have fresh pepper in your garden, you can use. This is like a garden dish. This is just a base. 
So now it's done. See how fast that was? Take it off the heat. And now we're going to start rolling. Let me um, clear this. Give me a second and then I'll clear the table. All right. I didn't so now realize that have... was like a hot plate thing that you were yes, using. That was a hot plate, so it'd be easy to uh, video. That is awesome. <laughs> right? it, it looks like a regular stove. <laughs> yeah, it's it was induction. a it's an induction. induction. Yeah, induction, induction stove. So now I need a bigger knife to chuck. All right, so now this is really hot. So I'm used to hot food, I can hold on to it. But you guys can cook the tofu ahead. It doesn't have to be super hot to slice. So you just slice it thinly, it doesn't have to be small, it could be chunky, however you want to eat your wrap. Mm -hmm. No, I need a bowl. Okay. So I'm going to put it back in here. All right. I'm going to put it back in this container where the tofu came out of, and we're going to mix everything in together. So you, if you guys like this recipe, I'm also a YouTuber a full-time YouTuber teaching you how to cook, decorate, and bake. So you can check me out, scratch to table. Like farm to table, I'm scratch to table. Okay, so you see the tofu's in the pan now? You just need a bowl to mix everything. And we're gonna toss the veggie in here. Oh, this smells so good, so fragrant. I have a friend in the background. She said, can we eat this afterwards? So she's waiting to try this. So you get to see a, a bias uh, opinion, not just me saying it's good. So can you see, it looks good? So the ratio here is you can have more tofu, you have more veggie, it's up to you what you like. Everybody is shaking their head. Yes, it looks good. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. You know, you notice I didn't add any salt in here because your soy sauce carries a lot. And then we're going to dip. We have two sauces. I'm going to show you how to make to uh, dip the veggie roll, a soy dipping sauce and a, a, a peanut uh, hoisin dipping sauce. So that's why you don't want to get this too salty. Otherwise, you won't be able to dip. And that's the key right there. So we're gonna start on the sauce now. Let me clean up my station a little bit here. So we have good video. Oh, um, forgot to uh, do one thing first. You don't, if you have a uh, scallion, then definitely you want to cook your scallion before you take off the heat. But I have chai and chai, you can eat it uh, raw. So I'm adding my, my cilantro and my chai in now while the mixture is still hot. You don't need to cook these two rough products and then you just toss them. But you have scallion, like I said, if you like onions, you can add the onion and saute it in there. Now, doesn't that look beautiful now, the colors and everything? Okay, now I'm going to teach you how to make the sauce. Oh, I'm going to do that. Cut that All right. So we're going to start with the soy dipping sauce.
Sonia says we're all drooling here, and I have to agree with her. <laughs> oh, okay. Let me sugar. Let me go sugar. I got sugar here. Okay, your soy dipping sauce is so easy. But the key to a good soy dipping sauce is the kikuman. This is the secret here. A lot of people won't tell you. You can use other soy sauce for the dipping, but kikuman has that unique um, smell, flavor, whatever how they brew the soy sauce. It makes a great soy dipping sauce. So I have tried it with two. And they, with um, non kikuman brand, it's still good. But when you use kikuman, it's much, much better. So here, um, ratio is is um, two to one usually, but you just follow my recipe right here. I'm not making a lot. So this is a quarter cup. So we're gonna do an eighth of a cup sugar. It's all about tasting. Do you like it sweeter, sour, or salty? And an eighth of a cup of soy. And we need also an eighth cup of water. I'll be right back. And a cup of, uh, this is like an eighth, half a lime. It's like an eighth of cup of, uh, eighth of, cup of um, lime juice. So you start out everything equal amount, eighth and an eighth to be sure. And then you taste it according to how you like it. You like it sweeter or do you like it saltier or do you like it more sour? Now, that's pretty much it. How do you make the soy dipping sauce? Is that easy or what? How much water was added to it? Uh, uh, eighth of a cup. Eighth of a cup. Okay. So if you don't like it um, too salty, if you taste it right now, let me taste it and we'll taste it together. If you taste it right now, Let's see. I like it, but the best way to taste is using a tofu because you're going to be dipping in it. I like it, but see, I like it a little sweeter, so I would put a little bit more sugar. So everything is equal amount. I like it a little bit saltier too. Yeah. Why I use the tofu as my taster? Because tofu takes on the flavor of whatever you use. So tofu is like a blank slate. You put tofu in whatever flavor you're cooking, that's what tofu, that flavor will become. So it's like my tasting spoon. Mm, much better. Okay, I have a uh, friend here waiting in the background. Let me see what she thinks. Oh, she can't do the tofu. Yeah, oh, she can't do Oh, she's allergic to soy. I have to make her a batch later then. <laughs> that's perfect so we set that aside now we're going to do the poison sauce so somebody asked if what you would substitute for the peanut butter if you can't have peanut butter um peanut butter is the main ingredient in the sauce so if you can't do uh, peanut butter then you can't do the sauce just do the poison have you uh, ever tried poison i don't know the person who's asking Poison is good by itself as well. You can water down with some stock, could be vegetable stock or chicken stock, water it down so it becomes dippable. Uh, I haven't tried with any other nuts, like, you know, um, like almond or cashew, 
I, they, are they allergic like to nuts period or just peanut butter? I, I don't know. They just asked. I would say to them that whatever you normally use to substitute your peanut butter and other right. recipes, try that. Yes. Um, it's not, it's just three ingredients, the water, the hoisin and the right. peanut butter. So yes. yes, you are right. The, the, the peanut butter is, if this is, that's why it's called peanut butter sauce with hoisin is your ingredient and you just put two together. It's all equal amount. If you like it to be more runny, then you add more water. That's pretty much it. See how this is really thick. If I didn't add the water, it'd be really thick. So let me mix it ahead for you see. And the ratio is one to one. And then you taste it and taste it with a tofu. See how it dip in there. You see how thick this is? Now I'm gonna add water and you will see. So this is a quarter cup of water. So I'm gonna do half of it. So that way you can see the thickness. If you want to be easier to, um, to stir the water in, you can do hot water, but I just did cold water only. See, it's pretty thick, so I like it a little bit more liquidy because you are dipping. So just add water. You go look at other um, peanut sauce recipe out there. It's really, uh, uh, how would you, I say, um, complicated, but pretty much it's just this three ingredients, it's the main component. You can always add to it. There's no problem. It gives you more complexity in your flavoring. See, now it's more dippable. So like I said, I'm gonna do a tofu again and see how it tastes. Mm. I will put a little bit more poison because poison, this is really peanut butter. So a little bit more poison will be good. That's just my taste bud. But it's not that much, a tablespoon. Poison add savory and sweet at the same time. So that's why it's the key right there. Okay, let's try it again. You're not gonna have any tofu left by the time you go to wrap them. <laughs> I have plenty. <laughs> it's only me and my sister here. The other one is allergic to tofu. I didn't know that. Mm. They want to know what the ingredients in the hoisin is. Okay. Hoisin sauce. It's sugar, water, soybean, salt, sweet potato, modified cornstarch, sesame seed, garlic, wheat flour, chili pepper, spices, and tamo. No. Oh, caramel. Caramel for the color. And potassium preservative contains soybean and wheat. So when I said it was, so when I said it was um, gluten free, it's only gluten free if you don't use the poison. So if you use the soy dipping, mm -hmm. then be gluten free. Does that make sense? Okay, let's start rolling. Now, when I make a roll, I buy the bigger. That. Oh, the screen is off. Mm -hmm. oh, turn it off. Oh, turn it off. No, hold on. Hold on, everyone. Hold on. Come on, Jesse. Sorry about that. So this is the rice paper. I buy a bigger size so that way you can roll a bigger roll, but you can roll a small roll too, if you like. So how do you do rice paper? It comes dry and you just wet it in water. Let me get some water. So 
So all you gotta do is soak it in water. Make sure it's soaked from both sides. Turn it around, make sure the water goes up, both sides. And then you're gonna lay it onto a plate. And it will just take a few minutes and it will be softened because right now it's, it's pretty hard, see? You hear it? So it will soften right up. So I usually do two at a time because you, you want to roll it once it gets soft right away. If you wait too long, then the rice cake will become really sticky and it's harder to roll. So two at a time, unless you're a fast roller. Okay, sit right there. Can you still see me? Everybody's good? Yes, we can see what you're doing, yes. Okay. All right, so now it's, see, it's, it's still, um, you know, it's pliable, but it's not super soft. The longer you wait, it'll be soft. So now is when you want to add on. Now, this is where the fun comes. You can do cucumber. So I'm going to do a few with cucumber. You can add whatever you want. You can add avocado in here too. Like I said, the veggie was your, was your um, base. So I'm, I'm adding my mixture in and now I'm going to add the noodles. So if you like noodle, add some noodle. You don't, you don't have to add the noodle if you don't want to. And now you can start. You see how it's getting, can you see it? Yep, you can see. See now, if you don't, if you wait anymore, it'd be really hard to roll because it's getting really sticky, see? So you roll like a burrito, fold the two sides, and then you push and roll, push and roll. Look at that. And I cut in half, you can see. See, so if you like more carrots, you can add the carrots. So if you like a potato, you can add potato too, like taro potato is really good. So they're done, you don't, you don't cook the rice paper? No, yep, the rice paper is raw. You don't cook it. You can um, roll this, that, that could be another uh, class on scratch to table. See, now I'm waiting too long. You see how this is really sticky now. You see, it's gonna be harder to roll if I wait. So let me roll this one. And this one, I'm just gonna roll with tofu. No noodle, no nothing. It looks just... like saran wrap almost, the way yes. you're- <laughs> Yes, yes. Yeah, that's, that's it, saran wrap. That's a good analogy. Thank you. So do you see how it stick to everything? So if you wait too long, it will stick. Okay, now you push, tuck. It's very sturdy as long as you don't overfill it. You overfill it. <laughs> somebody, it will somebody said edible saran wrap. Yes, edible yes, saran wrap. Yes, edible saran wrap. Nice analogy. Okay, shall we taste? Let me see, taste here. Oh, no, I have right here. Okay, I love hoisin sauce though. Let's taste. So yeah, I put a lot on, it's so good. Mm. Mm. Delicious. And does the rice paper add a lot of flavor or not? Nope. Rice paper and tofu take on the flavor, whatever you use. So if you didn't want the extra carbs you could just eat the mixture plain. Oh. Yes, or add it over a salad. You can add Ooh. over a papaya, papaya salad. Oh, somebody says use oyster sauce instead of hoisin. Yep. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Oyster sauce, you have to cook. Ah. You can't use it raw. Hoisin, you can use it raw or cook. Okay. Mm. Now let's try the soy dipping sauce. <laughs> Somebody said what um, they were they were ripping the rice paper and they wanted to know what they were doing wrong. Um, oh, they they waited too long. You gotta use it right away. Remember how I moved from one to two? You want me to do it again so you see? Yeah, you waited maybe a minute or two before you started wrapping. It wasn't even that long, so it's not even a minute. Yep. 
Let me show you again. Yes, they want you to do it again. They're excited for that. <laughs> <laughs> Move the water over here. Oh, this white paper has a hole in it, see? But it's oh, okay. Yeah. Soaking water. Now we use hot water even faster. What I have right now is cold water. And we're gonna let it sit right there so you can see. I'll hold up for you. We'll do. Somebody uh, has a timer, start the timer. <laughs> See how long before, See now you can, if you're not good at rolling, you see how it's pliable right now? You can fold it, so start rolling now, so it won't rip on you. The longer you wait, when it become like saran wrap, that's when it's, then it will rip on you. And if it's ripping on you, that's mean you overstuffing it too much, or you have fingernail poked through the rice paper, See, right now you can roll, so don't wait any longer. So my favorite, a lot of people do this too, is you don't have to do with veggie. You can just roll with um, rice noodle and get fresh basil, cilantro, and mint leaf, three leaves. And then, oh, I forgot. Add peanuts if you want a crunch factor in here. Oh, yeah. Add peanuts in there. See, start rolling. See, it's not hard. You can start rolling already. You see, that wasn't long. And it didn't rip. You see how it's easier to roll? Yeah, I would say 30 seconds to a minute for it to right. set. And then start uh -huh. loading it. And once you're done loading it, you can start rolling. Yes. See? So you can do with, you don't even have to do the veggie sauce. Using the rice paper, you can do um, rice noodle, any noodle you like. You can make it into a fusion, spaghetti noodle, whatever you like to eat. You roll it up and do your sauces. And then if you like a deep fry, you can put this whole thing into the deep fryer and the outer skin be crispy. So as long as- Or HW, that's what I was thinking is um, have everybody make their own at the dinner table and yes. you know have fun with it. They can put what they want in theirs. Yes, a, a lot of the Asian, um, when you, uh, if you watch a lot of YouTube channel on uh, Vietnam, they have a lot of hot pot and they wrap the egg rolls. They have all the condiments out and you can wrap as you go. Yep, very versatile. Yeah. You, they wanna yeah. know if you ever put the sauce inside the roll. Mm-hmm, you can, and you don't have to dip. You want me to do one for you, see? Sure. Mm. The peanut with the, Inside the roll gives us a nice level of texture, crunch. Can you hear? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Into the water. And you don't have to wait, you can start loading your stuff in now. Now, which sauce do you want? The peanut sauce or the soy sauce? Peanut sauce be easier to hold. Soy sauce, it's gonna- Peanut sauce, please. Soy sauce? Peanut. Oh, peanut, peanut, okay. Thank you. She really likes that sauce. <laughs> oh yeah, I love that sauce. That's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Would you be able to fry one just to test it and see how it comes out? I'm curious about that. I've never seen- a... Oh, right, paper, it puffed right up. Um, I already put away everything already. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I just on the stove? Can you do that? That's okay. Can you show that in the bag? What's that stuff? Oh no, that's shrimp. Oh, what bag? Right there in a Ziploc. Zip up. Oh, not those. Oh, right here they are. 
Oh no, that's shrimp chip. That's something else. Okay, so see, you see the sauce in there. I said, can you? Yeah. Make, oh, I didn't read that comment. They want to know if you can make these ahead, say for lunch the next day, or would they go sticky? Okay, so this is with the rice paper. You see how it gets softened? So you have to eat it within like about four hours, and I'm pushing it, so it will start drying out. So it's going to become the the dry version. So it's going to be very tough. So no, you can't not make this ahead. If you do make it ahead, it's about maximum four hours. I have never um, really made it ahead because we always make it on when we eat it or uh, at a party and everybody make them make the rolls themselves. But if you do make it ahead, you can roll them individually into wax paper so that way they don't stick or you can individually saran wrap them so they'll last longer, but not overnight. Definitely not overnight. Did I answer that question? <laughs> but if you deep fry it, let's see, uh, can I use this to deep fry? Okay, I can use this over here to deep fry. Thank you. It's just that you mentioned that they could be fried. And yes. I was I was curious about that because I've always seen these or eat um, have eaten these uh, like that. Just Yes, no, you can fry these. Okay. But when awesome. you fry, the texture become chewy. Chewy, oh, chewy not, not crispy? Crispy and chewy at the same time. Oh, okay. Interesting. Thank you. Okay, I'm not going to deep fry it. You can see the, um, the result from the frying part. I just have to roll it and you'll see. Okay, so I'm gonna make the roll and fry it. But when you fry it, you cannot put any sauce in there because it will splatter if it breaks open. Yeah, yeah, I figured. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we can do the veggie. We can do some noodles too. I'm gonna do a small one so that way, um, if I fry faster. See, you got everything loaded, but it's not pliable yet. If you use it now, it will break. So we're just waiting for the oil to uh, heat up. And oh, now let, let's get back to, um, if you don't want to make the veggie, you can do just noodle, shrimp, pork, and the three uh, herbs, uh, cilantro, uh, sweet, no, Thai basil, and mint. You roll it up. And you dip in, in both of these sauces really good. All right, so we're gonna, it's pliable now. So we're gonna roll it. Okay, nice. Now we're gonna wait until the oil is hot. Okay, it's sizzling. So you see how, if it was like a full pan of oil, you could see it bubbling up like crazy. You see how right here the bubbles? Can you see that? Yes, yes, you can see it. <laughs> Thank yep. you. So it will bub bubble up. So right now I'm trying to do like pan frying and frying at the same time. Yeah. This is not a wrapper that uh, is my favorite for uh, frying, but if you are gluten-free, yes. My gluten-free uh, friends love this wrapper for egg rolls because it's uh, gluten-free. You, you'll hear it get um, crunchy once we finish. They're what wanting we, to know if it's on medium heat or high heat? High. You, you want to, yeah, high heat. Uh, because everything is cooked inside. You just want to, the outside to be nice and crispy. So imagine this was a deep fryer, submerged in oil, okay? I'm just right. doing this version. Uh, so what do, you, what do you suggest we use for frying the the ones for lumpias? Um, you can fry in a. Uh, I'm not understanding your question. 
You you can fry in a deep fryer or in a saucepan and fry it. No, no, you said that you usually, if you are going to fry them, you don't yeah. use this rice paper. So I oh, was- Oh yeah, I don't use rice paper. I use the spring roll wrapper. You can get them frozen. For lumpia. Not, yeah. Yeah, not, not the mm -hmm. wonton wrapper and not the, the egg roll wrapper. Got it, thank I you. I always buy them in the frozen section and say spring roll wrapper. Yeah. Okay. And they come frozen, just defrost it out. Uh-huh. So you see this is uh, has no taste, no color, no sugar. So it's it's pretty much white. Yeah. Unless unless you fry it really dark and then become like this. But pretty uh -huh. much it's done right now, you know. It's can you can hear you here? It's crispy. Yeah, it looks great. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'll cut one open for you. You can hear crispy, yeah. so crispy and chewy at the same time. Uh -huh. Super hot, but it's very crispy. Nice, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Any other question? That's pretty much for cooking. This was wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay. That oh, okay, it looks delicious. Thank you. It tastes delicious too. You guys <laughs> gotta try it. And you can make it any way you like, you know, avocado and uh, and don't forget scratch to table, guys. Check me out. Scratch to table, yes. Thank you yes. very much, Trey. Um again, this will be on the Atlantic Institute's SC YouTube channel. Um, and while you're waiting for this one to get uploaded, check out our other, we have over 160 videos. Not all of them are cooking. There are some that are um, from our program called Cultural Creations. There's some interfaith um, videos. There is some educational and dialogue videos out there. So go check out our YouTube channel. Um, there is three years worth of cooking ones and we do them almost every month. So uh, do the math on that. Um, Yes, scratch the table. Yes, awesome. Yeah, somebody asked me, what's my YouTube channel? I didn't want to. <laughs> hey, and hey, I wanna... Paula, Paula. Yes. We also, we also have Sharon here. She's going to be the one for next month's uh, cuisine. Oh, yes. It's... We're going to do Caribbean style curry shrimp. Is that right, Sharon? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Caribbean style curry shrimp, which All goes right. well with white jasmine rice. Ooh, and she's going to send me the information on that um, in a couple days so I can yep. upload that information onto our Eventbrite. Yes, yes ma'am. So awesome. you can all sign up for that. Yes, so next month, Caribbean style curry shrimp. Yes, most Wonderful. definitely. Thank um, you. And I'm going to end the video now, and I want to thank everybody for coming, and we'll stay on for a couple more minutes in case you have any more questions. Okay. Stop recording. <laughs>